Hey y'all, so today I'm going to tell you the story of how I believe that God told me who my husband was and I was wrong. Now, this is the most vulnerable video that I'm ever going to make, okay? I've talked about my experience with drug abuse, uh, rape, molestation, all of that. But this is the one thing that was earth shattering for me because I was like, wow, I heard God wrong. And I had all these misconceptions about God after this. So I'm going to get into that. But the reason why I'm making this video is because I know that there are so many in the body of Christ who have gotten hurt by this. I have witnessed it in my friend group. I have seen a marriage that ended in divorce just recently. Okay. And uh, they believe that God told them who their spouse was and they got so many signs, so many signs, y'all, so many signs, even in the word. And I don't want you to go through what I went through. And if right now you are in a place where you believe God told you who your spouse is, I'm going to tell you right now, I have seen God tell people who their spouse is. I was a bridesmaid at a wedding where it was a supernatural story about how these two people got together and it seemed like it was not going to work out years later. She still believed that this man was her husband and boom, they got married. And it's such a beautiful picture, but God does not tell everybody who their spouse is. This is my point. God's go-to way to tell people Okay, God's go-to way to confirm to somebody that they can marry, that they should marry, that this is a wise choice to marry this person is not through signs, okay? Jesus said uh, to, at some point in the Bible, right, you wicked generation, you seek signs, right? And I'm not going to give you signs because you're seeking signs. We cannot rely on signs y'all because the devil can send signs our heart can deceive us the heart is deceitful above all things above the devil y'all above everything else above whatever it is that you want to name it above it is the heart the heart is deceitful above all things and the world tells you oh follow your heart sorry this thing is slipping follow your heart blah 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 no honey don't follow your heart because your heart is deceiving you baby it's literally connected to your flesh so and and your emotions i mean the devil uses your emotions okay so anyways um i'm just gonna fix this really quick i'm sorry guys i don't know why this is happening okay so i i'm gonna start from the beginning man i don't even know how i'm gonna make this video um uh, I had idolized, okay, having a husband for a long time, my friends, a long time, since I was a little girl, okay, I would go out and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to the grocery store, I'm going to meet the one, I'm going to meet the one, and I think it's kind of like brainwashing from like Disney movies, you know, the princess Disney movies, but um, I would date a lot of a lot of people, right, and I wouldn't sleep with them, right, but I would date a lot of people, and I did have sex before marriage, um, and unfortunately, okay, I, I was just, I wanted so badly a marriage. I wanted so badly a relationship. I was willing to compromise the person. And the first thing that you need to know and like, you need to know for a fact is that this person loves Jesus is not just a professing Christian, but a born again, walking by the spirit and not the flesh christian who goes to church and also reads their bible on their own time and also spends time with jesus and loves jesus and worships jesus and obeys jesus because jesus said if you love me you will keep my commandments okay to love jesus is to obey him you can't you can't separate divorce the two obedience and love go hand in hand obedience and faith go hand in hand you can't believe jesus christ as lord and savior that he died for you on the cross and rose again on the third day to defeat heal, hell, evil, sin, all that stuff. So you wouldn't go to hell and pay for your own sins. He paid for them for you if you will accept that gift. He, You cannot say you believe that and then continue in sin because the Bible says if we continue, 
should we sin that grace may abound in the book of Romans? No, God forbid. Okay. And some people are like, oh, grace, grace, grace. And then they say, you know, and, and there's some people that have literally said, wow, that couple, and, and they're Christian, right? Professing Christian. That couple is so godly and it's a homosexual couple. This is where we're compromising the word of God. And, you know, we're not truly born again believers who love God. And I'm going to tell you, it was one of those. But we need to fear the Lord and depart from evil. Okay, so you need to find somebody that's equally yoked to you. This is how it started. Uh, I saw a picture of this man. I was I, I, I had given up kind of thing. Like I had, I had dated a lot and then I'd idolized it. And then I kind of let it go when I was focusing on Jesus. And I was in a good place with Jesus studying at a Christian university. And then I saw this guy's picture on Facebook randomly. And I was like, wow, good looking guy, whatever. And I, um, I had this thought, that's my husband, okay? And I didn't bring it really before the Lord. I just believed it. And that's where, you know, like I believe in prophecy wholeheartedly, okay? God has used me in prophecy i have people had people prophesy over my life and it's come to pass but some people abuse the gifts absolutely and that's why a lot of people don't believe in the gifts because there's so much abuse in the charismatic you know christian world but also uh there's there's in the old testament it talks about prophets that prophesy from the imagination of their heart and sometimes we let our heart deceive us and we think that this is prophecy, that the Lord is speaking, right? And I didn't bring it before the Lord enough before I just full on believed it. Before, when we get a prophetic word from somebody, when we feel like God spoke to us, we need to seek him on that. We need to test every spirit. We need to test every word, right? So I believe this, right? And I would, I would say, God, you know, give me signs, and I would literally like pray for dreams and I would pray, God, let me see his name everywhere if this is my husband. You know, I really wanted confirmation and I would pray these things out loud. And I'm going to say this, the devil cannot read your mind. The only person that can read your mind is Jesus. And if he reveals the secrets of the heart, you know, of your heart to somebody for prophecy, which is in the New Testament, right? The secrets of the hearts of men are revealed through prophecy. And if you'll Google that, you'll see the verse come up. But the devil cannot. And so the devil, when you say, Lord, show me a sign of this, if this person is my spouse, of course the devil can pick that up and start giving you signs, 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 signs. That's why, I mean, anyways... And that's why when you get a word of prophecy that is true, maybe it's about your calling, maybe it's about a breakthrough that's coming, whatever it is to encourage you, to uplift you or give you instruction or correction and rebuke. All of a sudden you feel like the world is shaking. You feel like there's spiritual warfare. You feel like hell broke loose. Yes, hell broke loose because the devil does not know the future. But the devil sticks close to prophets because God said in his word, that he does nothing without first revealing his secrets to his prophets. He does nothing. The Bible says that. And I'll put that verse below. He does nothing without first revealing his secrets to his prophets. What he's going to do. And so the devil sticks close to the prophets. And he listens. Because, and I'm sure that when the time of Jesus was, you know, when he came into the world and there was a bunch of babies. I know I'm going on a tangent, but I'm, I'm coming back to the story. Uh, when there's a bunch of babies, you know, being born and Herod was like, I'm going to slaughter all the firstborn to get rid of this, you know, uh, son of God that's going to come, this Messiah. He probably heard some prophecy. I mean, the, the kings knew it, the ones that came. Or I, I don't know if they were shepherds. I got to look that up again because I got confused. But the three magi, right, that came and then they, they, they gave Jesus gifts when he was an infant when he was born in Bethlehem. They knew the prophecies, and so did Herod. And so the prophecies were spoken, and the devil knew, and he, it was a spirit of death. Same spirit that's, you know, that killed all the Jews in the Holocaust. Same spirit. Uh, somebody said that. Um, I think it was 
There was a preacher that said that. Uh, anyways, so the devil, when you get a prophecy, honey, watch out and start praying and get on your knees and literally don't be afraid of the devil, but you need to understand that you are at war with him and you need to fight him with the spiritual weapons that God has given you, prayer, worship, the word of God. So anyways, I believe that this guy was my husband. I had so many dreams. I have to ask my husband, Lance, because he went through all of my notes. I would have dreams and the Lord would, or I, I don't know. I don't, I'm going to get to that point in a second, but I had like hundreds, I think 188 or something like that dreams about this man being my husband. And I would write them down. I fasted for three days almost killed myself because I'm 5'1 and I'm like 100 pounds um for an answer for confirmation I prayed for his family I prayed for him I I would start making moves towards him and I would pursue him kind of like hints and then stronger hints because I started feeling like maybe he's afraid you know maybe he's shy or whatever and uh, he didn't know for two years he did not know that I even liked him. Maybe he did. Maybe because I'm pretty obvious. But um, I know, and everybody in our friend group knew, that he flirted with me for two years. And he could deny it. I mean, I called him after two years. I was so tired of just not knowing. I said, hey, have you been flirting with me for the last two years? And he said, no, I haven't. And from there, he got a girlfriend uh, and then got engaged. And it was devastating for me because I felt like I was led on. I felt like I was led on by God. I felt like I was lied to by God. And when I look back at this situation, y'all, in my right mind, okay, when I look back, I'm like, this guy was a Presbyterian who doesn't believe in the spiritual gifts, meaning and, and respect to him because he's a man of God, but he does not believe in the spiritual gifts. And I do. I've seen them in real life. I've seen people supernaturally healed from a broken hand. I've seen before my very eyes. I've seen prophecy fulfilled. I've seen a million things. So he doesn't believe in the spiritual gifts. Presbyterian is almost like Catholic, which I used to be Catholic, and I'm going to make a video on uh, Catholicism and why I left the Catholic Church um, using only scripture, right? I'm going to only use scripture. Uh, you know, and, 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 and it just, we didn't mesh together. But I was attracted to him. That was basically it. And he was, you know, studying to be a pastor. And I, I saw that he loved God. But we were not equally yoked. Just because the person loves God doesn't mean you're equally yoked. If you have theological differences, guys, don't do it. I mean, there are cases where you can, but like, and God will work it out and bring you guys on the same page. But be careful. You know? This is the person you're going to marry. This is who you're going to marry is the second most important decision you're going to make in your life besides first accepting Jesus and turning and repenting from your sin. And this is the thing. I idolized it so much that when he told me he wasn't flirting with me and when everything broke down, I went back I went back to the world. I went back to partying that entire summer. I went back to, um, I fell into sex outside of marriage one time. I got really depressed. I went on antidepressants. I just lost it, okay? I was so mad at God. And you know what I realized? I said, I realized, I was like, wow, I have... In the end, when I when because all the consequences of my sin finally caught up to me. You either learn the hard way or you realize that you're in a pickle, you're in trouble, you're in disobedience to the Lord, and you repent and you humble yourself and seek your God and come back and get your mind straight. Or you do what I did, which is you keep going on with your sin, drugs and all this stuff, 
and sex outside of marriage and blah, 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 and rebelling against God. And sometimes God's not punishing you. Sometimes it's your sin punishing you. That's it. And people are like, you know, man, how could God punish me? God, God literally put these commandments there to warn you not to do this. And for this very reason, look at you, you're suffering. There's natural consequences for your sin. So this whole summer, I was just seeking, I was being my own God kind of thing. Mad at God, doing my own thing. All the consequences hit me. I was heartbroken after sex outside of marriage. I was, it was devastating. Everything started to fall apart in my life. And I finally said, you know what? And God was telling me this whole time, Jackie, make YouTube videos, make YouTube videos. This is before like this ministry really picked up and I was like, okay, like getting serious about it. And the Lord said, make YouTube videos. And I said that whole summer, I'm sorry, God, I'm trying to give you some, give myself something that you're not giving me. And this is what happened. I hit rock bottom and I realized that my way is not going to work, that his way is better. That even though I don't understand what happened here and I don't understand the, the, the dreams and the signs and everything that I thought was him, even all of that, I know he's good. He's delivered me from my addictions before supernaturally, one day to the next, and I went back. But he has done so much for me. My God is so good. And I came back to my first love. And I started seeking Jesus. I'm so glad that he corrected me. I'm so glad that my sin punished me. I'm so glad that I had people rebuking me and telling me, Jackie, you're in the wrong here. You need to repent. You need to stop. You're playing with fire. And I started seeking the Lord. And I fell in love with Jesus like, y'all. Like nobody's business. And I didn't even care about a man anymore. Like having a man. I didn't want one. And my YouTube, you know, I started being more consistent and it started becoming more of a ministry. And I was like, okay, this is what, this is in my heart. This is what I want to do. And I always say this because there's a lot of people that look for the platform or look for whatever. I didn't look for any of this. I didn't, I, I wasn't looking for any of this. What I had in my mind, there was this vision that I've had in my mind for years now. Since I was a baby in Christ was, um, and I'm just an evangelist by heart. God just did that. Put, he gave me the, the gift of evangelism. And um, I've had this pain because there's so many people that will never experience God's love the way I have and never know him the way I have. I can't believe it. I can't understand it. It's, does, it's unfathomable. People are dying right now. People are going to hell. People, you know what I mean? And people, do you, you just please know my Jesus. Please give him a chance. He loves you. I felt him touch me physically. And I've, I've seen him transform my life and who I am. This is why I do what I do, right? I've, I've, I've had this vision in my mind of me. And I've seen, God, this is what I want. This is what I want. I want to go up to the top of the highest mountain in the world. And I want to have a microphone and tell everybody about you. And I said that my whole life since I was born again, which was back in 2017. And, and this ministry, this is, he, he's doing it. And this is such a pleasure for me that I get to tell people about Jesus and, and help people to get there. Even through this, the most embarrassing thing that I've been through, I'm telling you, don't idolize the opposite sex over God. Please listen. I have loved being married. My husband is wonderful when I, and, but he is wonderful. He has helped me through traumas. He has blessed me. He has brought healing to me. The Lord has healed me through him. He has taught me to get out of bad habits. He has corrected me. He has led me so well. He has taken care of I love my husband. He's wonderful. A gift from the Lord. But it is it is harder to, you know, you have to learn how to balance being with Jesus, right? And being with your husband and, and that time and dedication, right? You Because it's hard. You want to be with your husband all the time. 
And also, you understand that he's infallible. Your husband, your wife is going to fail you. Going to fail you. And you get a, a deeper appreciation for Jesus in those moments. Because you understand that this person, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, creator of the universe, will never fail you. Never hurt you. Never, ever disappoint you. And even though life circumstances are bad and sin has come into the world, there's trauma, there's pain, there's suffering, there's death does not mean that Jesus Christ has failed you and disappointed you. He did something about all of that on the cross for you and for me and gave us a new hope of everlasting life for all that will believe in him and repent of their sins. So I finally focused on the Lord and I was done and I didn't want a husband and I focused on my ministry and I did this and I got a DM. I got, I got a few DMs. But I got a DM from my husband now, Lance, on Instagram. And I saw, and I, he was like, hey, love what you're doing for the Lord, da-da-da, whatever. And I saw his, uh, I looked at his page. I was like, wow, he's, he's writing for the Lord. He's making YouTube videos. He's made one YouTube video every day for like, I don't even know how many years, four or five years. That man is dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ faithful man. And I say this, a man with a hundred million dollars in the bank that is unfaithful will forever live in the shadow of the man who is of a faithful spirit. My husband is faithful to his employers, to his family, to me, to God. I'm just, that's, that's the best quality a man can have. And so I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, wow, he's faithful to the Lord. He's been posting, you know, he, he cares. His doctrine is good. Okay. And he's like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be traveling, but I'm teaching a Bible study. Come and, and see me. I'm like, okay. Cause this is what happened. Sorry. I don't do stories. Well, I'm sorry. So he said, Hey, love what you're doing. I'm like, love what you're doing for the Lord. Keep doing it. He didn't answer. I posted a picture two weeks later at this restaurant with my friend. He's like, Hey, is this, this restaurant? Da, da, da. I'm like, in this place, in this city. I'm like, no, it's not, but that's 30 minutes away from me. So I message him. I'm like, I'm 30 minutes away from you. He's like, wow, I'm traveling soon. I'm having this Bible study. Come and see me. I'm like, perfect. So I go, I see him. And, uh, turns out his pastor is my professor of my Christian university and God just did it. And we got to know each other and we literally went through all the skeletons in the closet, all the questions that people take so long to ask because they want to put their great, their representative, right? For the dating phase for like six months. And that's not who they really are. And they're hiding all these secrets and they're hiding their flaws. We didn't do any of that. We did not waste time. So God gave that man to me despite all of my disobedience and everything, because I finally was obedient to him to do his will, to repent from my sins. And I was not idolizing a man anymore. And I was ready for that man to come into my life. When we're idolizing a, a person to the point where we're getting mad at God because they're not, he's not bringing our spouse. If we're getting mad at God. We have made marriage an idol. We need to get to the point where we're okay with not having anything because Jesus is enough and his grace is sufficient. And that is when uh, God will bring that person into your life. And when you're ready, you know, um, you know, God's not God. My husband got set free from porn addiction years ago uh, through deliverance, supernaturally set free. Uh, but I don't think that with all the traumas and things that I've been through, I don't think that I could handle a man that was addicted to pornography and not having sex with me, but watching pornography instead. God knew that. And so he was not ready until God delivered him to have a wife like me, uh, who uh, has been cheated on, etc. And so um, sometimes there's issues within ourselves that we need to, we need to figure out with the Lord. Um before God is, God's not going to trust you with a son or daughter if you are not, if you're going to hurt them. If you're not faithful to God, what makes you think you're going to be faithful to them? So, um, and sin is cheating on God. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to end with this 
verse. 1 Corinthians 7.32, if you got your Bible, which you should, it's the sword of the Spirit, okay? Um, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. When you're unmarried, you're literally focused on the Lord. Okay, you got focus, energy, vitamins. Like, you're literally Jesus, all Jesus. And it's beautiful. And you're dedicated to him. And there's no distraction. But he that is married cares for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. And that is just a fact. Okay, you have to take care of your wife or your husband now. It's not the same Singleness is a gift, okay, because you get to dedicate all that time to Jesus, and it's amazing. And anybody that told me that before, I would be like, says you, because you're married, I'm lonely, I'm single, and I want a husband. Now that I have one, I understand that it's a gift to be married, but it was also a gift to be dedicated to the Lord in my singleness. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Okay, she's like, I want to be holy for you, Lord. You're my husband. That was me. I was that girl. Uh, because it says in Isaiah 54, your maker is your husband. But anyways, uh, you know, I was, I was, I wanted to be holy in body and spirit. But that she is, but she that is married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, a trap upon you, but for that which is comely and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Right now, until God brings your spouse, serve him without distraction. There's this meme that says, do what servers do. If you're waiting on the Lord, Lord, do what waiters do. They serve. Serve the Lord while you're waiting. Don't be idle waiting. Oh God, you haven't given me my spouse. I don't get it. I'm I'm getting old. Da, da, da. God said, seek the kingdom of God first and all these things shall be added to you. Take care of God's business and he'll take care of your business. You know, God doesn't owe us anything. He doesn't. But if any man think that he behaves himself uncomely toward his virgin if she pass the flower for age and needs to require let him do what he will he sinneth not let them marry so if, if you have a girlfriend and you are equally yoked and this is from the lord and you have a peace about it because with my husband i didn't get any signs baby with my husband i had peace from the lord it went together we were equally yoked you could see it went along with scripture it was according to the will of god why because we were bringing each other closer to god we were equally yoked in all ways. And, you know, we were both seeking the Lord. And it was it was just meant to be. And But Lance and I got married four and a half months after we met. Why? Because we were kissing and, you know, clothes stayed on. But we were getting a little too uh, close. And so we are teachers of the word we have to be above reproach and we were like these few times that we've fallen can't happen we were already talking about marriage in december but in august we were like you know let's just get married because we don't want to be above reproach and the bible says you know it's better to marry than to burn you know if you it says right here if you cannot if you're not behaving yourself right with your virgin uh marry but be sure that this is the person for you. And I should make a whole video on like, I almost married the wrong person. Thank God I didn't. God, when, when somebody rejects you, okay? The rejection hurt me so bad. When somebody rejects you, understand a lot of times it's God's protection. Rejection is God's protection. So I hope that this brought clarity to some of y'all. This was such a hard video for me to make, guys. It was so vulnerable for me. Ah, but it had to be done. I love you guys so much. And I really hope that um, this helped some of you and encouraged you that uh, if you just seek the Lord first, um, he will give you the gift of marriage. He will not leave you alone. Um, he loves you very much. Uh, but no one and nothing is more satisfying and more
amazing, and more perfect than God and his love for you. It will never fail, and their love will.